you're watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin, and you know what that theme music means. What? It's time for Mr. Brad Rambert. What the tech? We gotta work on our, our fist bump in, in, in the. This, this oh, space, oh. we gotta work it out. Yeah, it's yeah. The lounge matic so Yeah, this is our it. temporary home. It's a lovely it's place. It's working. It's, it's working. Totally. I like it. Totally. So since we saw you last, mm. you had a had something cool happen. Oh, there's your graphic. There we go. Yeah. What, what the, tech? the tech? Oh, the tech now is an airplane. I asked. What the so. tech? Yeah, it's your airplane. So you yeah. are an official. I'm a flight instructor. Flight instructor. That's pretty cool. So you could take right JB out. over here out and teach him how to fly a plane. Yep. How to fly and not to die. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I really don't have an interest in learning how to fly planes, but I'd go Which on a ride. We should go. Yeah, I'll I'll sit next to you. We'll do a we'll do a San Diego Bay tour. And okay, you can see all that the sounds fun. I grew up from oh, there. I like that. Okay, yeah. cool. So let's talk. Okay, normally we talk about tech stuff, and this mm -hmm. is tied to tech, but I do oh, want to yeah. talk about something that is trending right now for a lot of folks in the country, which is college application time. Lots of for changes. parents that have seniors, but also I have a junior and it's already starting to be a thing. And yeah. I'm seeing people post on social media and it drives me bonkers. I have to unfollow people because they're posting all the things they're doing and it's just giving me anxiety because I think I'm not doing those things. Do I need to be doing those things? What am I doing wrong? I don't know. So that's with dance specifically. Sure. You know, all the things. So I want to actually talk about, you know, the pressure on high school kids mm. to get to where you are now. So you have a senior. Talk to me about what's going on with this process. Well, so my senior wants to be a mechanical engineer. It's a very specific. He's tech. got a propeller head too. Oh, hat, he's got whatever. he's got a, a propeller hat for every day of the week. <laughs> Uh, he, he's gotten this from me. He comes by it honestly, and, mm -hmm. and we're flexing into it for sure. Well, so, your, your wife's pretty smart, too. She's yeah. smart. I, I swam way past where I could touch in the gene pool <laughs> and, and found his mother. Okay, great. Yeah, so it's good stuff. So he wants to be a mechanical engineer, and, and that's a very specific technical education. And so how do you learn how to do that? So people do it OJT, but university is a, a place where you would really want to start to do that mm -hmm. and be professionally certified so ojt on the job I'm training yeah yeah you got to break it down for people out right. there and me i was like what is ojt yeah, sir. okay got it. my acronyms yeah o uh, on the job training but to find specifically where would be a good college yeah for your particular field that your child wants to go to. Yeah, so now we're opening the, the proverbial can of worms. So uh, here on the left coast, we have all these schools that uh, his admissions counselor calls the sweatshirt schools. Oh, I wanna go there. Well, mm -hmm. why? Well, because I, I've heard all sorts of answers because they have a great football team, they have a great reputation. For what, right? So there are small schools you've never heard of that do those things phenomenally, but they don't have a football team or a basketball they team. Don't have, they didn't go they to the They don't have the college letters that everyone recognizes. Exactly. If, so if you take a, a Caltech as an example, right? Do you know where Caltech is? Uh, no. It's harder to get into than MIT and Harvard okay. and all those places, but it's a phenomenal engineering school. Yeah. It's right next to the JPL, the Jet Propulsion Labs in Pasadena. Okay. As is Harvey Mudd, it's a Claremont College. Yes, so, I've heard of that. So we start thinking about engineering schools in, in our case and where, what part of the world would he want to be in? Is he going to be able to handle the weather? Mm -hmm. Is he going to be in classes with three and four and 600 people? Is he going to have a good lab environment? Because mechanical engineering, you got to work with stuff, you got to build things, right? Right. So, and then there's the University of California, which I think is the largest public university on the planet, if not the second behind the California state system, just mm -hmm. thinking in state in the moment. Yeah. So these, uh, what gets interesting about it is what is the right campus? What are the right professors? What is the right program? Are you going someplace because of its geography? I've heard that I want to go to the University of Hawaii to study what? Yeah. Well, I like Hawaii. Yeah, right. And that logic loop brings me up short. Uh -huh. So if you're going to study something, why would you study it in this particular place? The only time that that might work out mm -hmm. would be in a case where someone doesn't know exactly what they want to do. If they're not focused on doctor, engineer, something specific where they know a college is good at that particular field, yeah. then maybe you go to a New York City school if you want to just try it. Because it's your only opportunity in life to really try a new city in a temporary yeah. Time. Yeah. So this is this is where it, for me it gets super interesting, because there are all sorts of things you can major in, and there are all sorts of schools that are run by states and run by private companies, and run by endowments, and their job is to sell you an education. Well, is that education going to help you keep yourself fed when you're done with it? 
right. or you're just going to be a place and try some things and maybe go to class and that might work out and that might not. Right. So which was actually my trajectory and I don't necessarily <laughs> suggest it. Uh, but think about the expense right? of you got into a school. I went to this great school. Okay. Well, what did you study? Something that you could have studied closer to home right. and less expensively. Now, mm -hmm. post COVID and with the internet and availability of resources, that information can be spread out de very democratically and very inexpensively. So it really is an interesting thing to me. Why do you want to go to the school you want to? Why do you want to study what you want to study? What is, mm -hmm. What's the end game? So I think right. a lot of young people don't have a clear vision there. And I wouldn't expect it at 18. If I think of me at 18, mm -hmm. I'm lucky I'm not in jail, right? Well, right. I mean, I know that for me. There's college. So I want to talk quickly about, because um, you touched on it, the social media, the college sweatshirt factor. Yeah. Do you think that now in this age of Instagram and TikTok and everyone's seeing the photos and the reveals are on camera and videotaped and the pressure for these kids is is elevated even more than it was when, when it was my turn way back when. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, how do we get kids to kind of think past what sweatshirt are you going to wear and how cool is your Instagram pic going to be and really get to yeah. those questions that are what's realistic for you, whether cost, mm -hmm. what you want to do, class size, because there are so many amazing schools out there. Mm -hmm. You know, these top five that we all talk about are amazing and impressive, but there's so many schools out there that really that you can get into. Yeah. And it's not impossible to get into, and they're going to give you an amazing education. Absolutely. So if we, we can take the inverse of that and see what happened with USC and the recruiting and the, the actors being thrown in jail. Oh, school what has a horrible a situation. School has a great reputation, uh -huh. but is it for turning out highly qualified candidates or a really strong alumni network? It's probably the latter. Mm -hmm. And so people are doing illegal things, admittedly, to get their kid into that school because that reputation is associated with them and then that makes things easier once they come out, uh -huh. right? And so th that is all the thinking gone wrong, if you ask me. Right. So uh, example, I have a, a, a mentor who wanted his children to go to Princeton, which clearly is a good school. Yeah. But why that versus Stanford or Harvard? Well, because the teachers actually teach. You're not gonna be in with the teaching assistant, the professors, tenured or not, teach class. Einstein taught class. Mm. Right. At Princeton. Yeah, uh -huh. right? And so I go, wow, that's that's an important thing to learn. So how do you find those facts out about schools that you're interested in? Like, how do you do, how do you go deeper into just then the surface level, yeah. what's my sweatshirt look going to look like? So for us, how we've been working through this, and we have a, a full-time admissions counselor with my eldest school, it's what do you want to study? what kind of town is it in? Are you going to be dealing with snow drifts when you grow up in San Diego? You know, that's an important question to know. So uh -huh. you, you want your head in the right place so you can learn what you need to learn. Class size matters, uh, access to professors, and in his case, uh, lab environment. What are you going to be able to do lab-wise? Mm -hmm. So if you were looking to major in Spanish literature, wouldn't you want to be a place where Spanish is spoken a lot? Right. Right? Yes. Versus having to study abroad necessarily. So you, you, those are sorts of the kinds of choices that... Uh, we're looking into and then expense of course clearly matters are you in state versus out mm -hmm. um, and then honestly what percentage of graduates are landing in their job and career field mm. when they graduate and, and that is facts that you can look up or you Absolutely. can inquire about mm -hmm. right with the admissions counselor yep. office okay yep, yep. I want to talk quickly about the other side of it is you know the kids that are in high school even mm -hmm. junior high that are feeling pressure to yeah. go to clinics go to camps go to get um, mm -hmm. internships the or, resume builders the resume builders it's so much pressure on these kids and I actually succumb to it all the time yeah um, what is realistic and what is like just and have your kid enjoy life and do what they like to do and stop trying to resume build you know here's how this works so both of mine worked in a warehouse this summer is that going to turn them into one of them wants to go into medicine one wants to go into engineering is it going to turn them into good uh, engineers and doctors um indirectly yeah because you got to get up and do something that someone else Work is ethic. paying you for exactly mm -hmm. so that's a big deal so the, the resume building part if you plan to do something as an adult do you want to start working on getting good at it now for me the big metaphor is flight training Kids have amazing hands, they play lots of video games, you put them in an airplane, they learn three times as fast as an adult who's already in a career and might be married and has children of their own, right? Yeah. So there's a, there's a distinct difference. And so once you expose them to those things that they might wanna do as an adult, 
then they actually know a little more about it and might continue on that path or maybe go, this isn't for me. I have one who says, you know, I get a little air sick. Maybe this isn't, piloting isn't for me. Okay, great. Okay, great. I get it. Yeah, so it's that kind of thing. But I, I think that if you put it in the spirit of exploration and understanding rather than to look competitive, now that a lot of schools don't need SAT or ACT scores, they literally tell you they won't look at them. Yes, that's a big thing in California. Okay, we got to take a break and we do have some tech questions for you in the next segment. Okay. Can you stick around for some more tech questions? Sure. We're talking with Brad Ramber, cybersecurity expert, pilot, dad of a college-bound child soon, and we'll be right back with yeah. more America Trends right after this.